What up, though? This is the Free Game Producer Podcast. My name is Brian Andre. I got the homegirl, Travi, in the building. What's good? And I got the super producer, the multi-platinum producer, the big homie, Will Power, in the building. What up? What up, man? Yo, we back for another week. You know what I'm saying? We hit y'all with a couple bonus episodes. You know what I'm saying? We are big on the content because we believe that our listeners are the best. You know what I'm saying? And they deserve to get the best, and that's the best content on music production, on music business, you know what I'm saying? It's been crazy, you know, around here lately. I think, um, I don't know if, like, people are starting to find out. We already knew about you being one of the best producers in the world, but, like, the phone been ringing off the hook now. It's uh, like, you've you been having, like, nonstop sessions going on. Yeah, no, nah, it's going good, man. I mean, we, we, we working. I'm definitely not one of the best producers in the world, but I'm working on it. I think, I think, at least from like a talent perspective, because I've been around you for years now, and whenever I tell somebody about, you know, willpower, I'm like, look, this dude, like, you can do it all. You can play. And I'm not, this wasn't planning to, like, do a willpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, the willpower, he played the keys, he played the keys, he, you know, beat the drum machine, you know what I'm saying? I work, man. I play guitar, I mean. I can't, I can't be mad, man. I appreciate the love. It'll be no I mean, better than that. I, it is a blessing, though, man, to see, like, when work begets work. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like nothing special here. Just, you know, working and trying to, yeah, just doing my thing. I, I, I don't think about it when I do it. It just is what it is, man. And I'm having a good time and I'm getting some recognition for it right now, which is also good. So hopefully we can, you know, double and triple that exposure because uh, we can use some hit records around here. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Price of Fame is getting some attention. Yeah, man, it's going really good. I'm stoked about it, man. We saw uh, LeBron James. LeBron James, James bro. How about you know I'm saying? The best basketball player in the world. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, arguably the best athlete, professional athlete. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, nah, I just thought that was crazy, man. I mean, I'm on Instagram doing what everybody else does on Instagram, and I see the post go up, and I was like, oh! Yeah. So yeah, now nah, I think that's that's something I can take with me forever. Like, you know what I'm saying? That shit's getting saved to my phone and my hard drive just so I can always have it. That's yeah. you just those are you know what I call the memorable moments of my career, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's up there like that's right up there with when I met and worked with Eminem. Yeah. That's right there in that, that category. So so yeah, I mean like and for those of you who may not exactly know what we're talking about. LeBron James posted, I think yesterday or today, mm -hmm. uh, you know how he works out or if he rides in his car, he'll post what he's listening to and he'll be bumping it out right. of his head. Right. And he literally bumped, was bumping Big Chris, The Price of Fame, which yeah. is produced by Willpower. Right, right. He right. was bumping it hard too. Yeah, and, you know and was, not only was he bumping, but he actually took the time to like write out yeah. what he was listening to. And, yeah. like, and like even more, you know, even more of a celebration goes to Crit because like he actually shouted Crit out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like a resistance. Residual, yeah. uh, as I'm getting residual love from it, but it was really dope to see Craig get that kind of shine, you know, from somebody that I also know he's a big fan of. You know what I'm saying? Like I, me and Craig, you know, we like I'm a I'm a a, a Golden State fan. Yeah. So you know, all my all my favorite teams are in the Bay. Right. And so um, and so you know, last year was a bad year, and then, you know, Creek, you know, the year before Creek gave me the business, but last year I gave him yeah. the business. And so yeah. to see him get that opportunity was really dope. To get a shout out from like his favorite athlete. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just crazy, man. Like I, I just think those kinds of things don't happen all the time. Yeah. And I just think that it's a testament to all of our listeners that when you stick to some shit and you work really hard at it, eventually you'll start to get the results and you'll get what you want from it. Man, one thing I like about the new things that we're doing here at Free Game, man, it's like really dope kicking it with y'all and just like kind of getting, like we sit around, like people think we just, I guess they might think we just jump on the air and talk, but yeah. really like we spend a lot of time just trying to cultivate ideas and yeah. relationships and yeah. we're really working really hard at just trying to make sure that the show has a, a substance based yeah. Yeah, so show yeah. is what we really want to yeah, and appreciate it. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I just want to shout both of y'all out because, you know, I'm requiring quite a bit of extra time and work and you guys are just like doing it like champions. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no bitching and moaning and crying and all that extra shit that I've seen in my past before. <laughs> well, it's fun. I, I think anything that's fun, you know what I'm saying? Of course it's going to be hard work, but, you know, if it's fun, I mean, you want to work hard if it's something that you love. Yeah, right. I agree. Good energy too. Yeah. I personally, like, I need that. 
Well, I'll tell you what, the facility has a lot to do with the way things are going too. Like mad, mad energy in here. You know what I mean? Like we're literally sitting around this big wooden table every day, powwowing it just create shit so eventually we're getting better and better at like getting getting all of this shit under control so i'm having a good time doing it you know what i'm saying and now it's really really uh dope to finally have a group of people a team of people who are seeing the vision and we're also being we're doing really well at making sure that everybody's like receiving goal-oriented uh destinations out of this you know what i'm saying yeah. so you know a lot of this stuff might have a name on it or it might just that and the third not about that and it's dope that it's coming out that way. It's like everybody's getting their own look. Yeah. So that's the dope, dope yeah. move. Yeah, you got some drag? Oh, I'll say this one. So I'm here, but. <laughs> oh, well, I was just looking at Will's page, the usual ones to see on his new works, because he'd be freaking it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but, I did. Um, you with, uh, you know, I know Trinidad James was here. Trinidad James yeah, was here. What's that? What, what yeah. was that? All right, so that was like a reunion moment for me. Yeah, Trinidad's one of my great friends. Like, very few people that I work with in the industry, like, normally when you meet a person, there's an agenda attached. Not to say that's necessarily bad, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times when a producer meets an artist, there's an agenda attached. It's yeah. like, yo, I really want to work with this person, and we probably won't have very much of a relationship if we don't work together. But it was, it's never been that with Trinidad. I was fortunate enough to meet Trinidad before he ever put out any record. Before he put out um, I'll go with everything. And now I had saw him at some shows doing the song, but he hadn't dropped the song yet. So I met him in that era. And, and at that time, you know what I mean? We just like connected as just homies, you know? And I mean, I've got songs on top of songs on my hard drive with him, but it's never like, it's nothing trippy. It's just like, yo, we just love making music together. Yeah. But this time, he really came through here and had an agenda. And, it, and I thought that was really dope of him because he was like, I want you to make me a record that I hear in my head, yada, yada, and we did it. And it, it went, you know, and he's like a very busy person. So when he comes to Atlanta, he's usually passing through. He ended up doing two days with us. You know what I'm saying? Something else I forgot about this week was the uh, contest. Yeah. The music industry contest, like we picked 10 winners. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And those 10 those ten finalists, I'm sorry, not winners, let me, re, let me reword that. We picked 10 finalists, right. we'll have one official winner. But these finalists are amazing. And so, you know, when we first picked them, we wanted to just be like, all right, we like this guy. But dude, after like a week of riding around listening to these shits, like I'm really like, yo, Cause you know it's one thing to check out a demo, it's like sit with it for a minute, it's cool, it's whatever. But like when you really start to dig into it, you'll be like, yo, did they say that? Oh wow, that was some incredible songwriting. Or, the, you know, so I'm going through that. Real soon we're gonna announce the winners on that. I appreciate that, Travis, because I, I definitely forgot about so much shit that went on this week. They're saying that Chris Brown the album we talked about on the last episode uh it's already gold after a week i'm trying to find confirmation yeah, that because confirmation that was, was not a tweet, the only place i see it is from the people who was on the album, on the album right. i don't see any other in it because the numbers i saw was like seventy thousand with streaming the sales so that's a far cry from five hundred thousand yes so i'm still trying to verify that and i'm sure they wouldn't be saying that for no reason but i don't know i'm trying to get confirmation i, I mean it's simply i mean we we did the number play a few weeks ago i think on the show so we already know that if the more so i mean more than like it's going to get there anyway i mean yeah. it would be incredible if it made it this fast but well and it was a short week because uh the album came out they're gonna Halloween. Yeah, yeah, Tuesday, right. so they didn't get the four, they didn't get the four they got like four days. Right. So I don't know if they're counting that four days plus the other three from the next week. At any rate, if it's gold, it would go really fast. Yeah. So. But still though, I don't know if they have the projection from seven seventy thousand to five hundred as a lot of yeah. But speaking of that, something interesting, you know, a couple weeks ago, was it Kenny Chelsea had the album called the country album came out? Chesney. Chesney, yeah. yeah. And he sold like almost three hundred thousand copies, but most of those were not streaming. They were Most physical copies. Physical copies. Wow. And here's, here's the interesting shit though, is Taylor Swift's album, Reputation's coming out Friday. She's not putting her album for streaming for two weeks. Whoa. You can only get physical copies. That's that's doing the damn thing. But see, like, let me tell you why I think it's gonna work. I personally, oh, sorry. well, first off, it depends on, you know, like, I'm sure they've done some great Research partnerships and partnership. stuff. Yeah, like, like Target is like Target. Their main so they're gonna be available. They're gonna make sure the CDs are available. My only thing is this though, like, a lot of people, we forget, we forget. And when I say we, I say 
I mean Atlanta, LA, New York, Miami, the big cities, the big places, you know, the streaming people. We forget that there's a whole middle America, man, that still listens to CDs and they still go to the store to pick it up. They still want a hard copy. People down in the South, you know, like down in Mississippi. It was one of the things that we even talked about with Crick because it was like, dude, I can't just stream. I gotta get these people some, some actual product, you know? And so that's kind of, I still think it still exists. I mean, the truth is I bought two copies of Crick's album and, and I, that's what I listen to when I'm in the car. Unless you have a really late model car, you don't even have streaming services like that. You still gotta pop something in or you gotta go ox court, right? Right, right? So they'll do fine. I don't know how many more times they're gonna be able to pull this off in the near future, but that but right now it comes like you still got room to do that. Yeah, and let me just mention too for clarity purposes, when we say physical copies, we mean physical CDs and physical downloads. Mm. You know, so so downloads is is included as a physical copy, mm -hmm. which of course the numbers we talked about it last week. The numbers for physical downloads are dying faster than CD sales are dying. Yeah. But all in all, you can you will be able to buy the album either a physical download or a physical copy, but not streaming for two weeks. And it's crazy because the, her label, I think Universal, is saying that she's going to sell two million copies the first week. Now analysts. Analysts are disputing that, saying it's no way. They say more like eight hundred thousand, but they're saying two million. So I hope she does it. I hope she does. Maybe it'll maybe might revive the industry on that end. But I think she's a disruptor, man. I think uh, she's yeah. one of those people who just continues to pave new creative ways of getting shit done, man. I mean, like she's always been on that edge. So I mean, she's one of those people who practically owns her own. Yeah, she owns yeah. her whole empire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, I, I think that um, it'll work for her. And like I said, Kenny Chesney, you know, sold big numbers, and his was mostly physical copies as well. Right. Country music, all through the Midwest, all through right. the South. I know what I'm saying. But I think that overall, though, that's not a good strategy because you got to go with technology. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not moving backwards here. Yeah. We're well, moving well, forward. I, yeah. I kind of wonder what the. I wonder what the purpose is but it just i kind of feel like maybe well i think it's i think for her it's a money grab because the streaming might hurt her physical sales it actually does and you know what you might be right it might not what doesn't make sense is for her to do millions and millions of streams and not be able to see the dollar amount exactly. that that's worth exactly so that does make sense i guess at the end of the day hell if she sells if she sells two hundred thousand copies she's gonna make she that's why. Yeah, so you know, I think that's something to keep our eye on and I think in the upcoming weeks. If she do two million copies though, bro, man, the game's gonna change. She gonna have some like that's gonna be that's gonna say something. Cause bro, like you said, if, if it's a money thing, bro, like it which it really is, bro, like people gonna get tired of that. People are gonna be like, wait a minute, so maybe we need to go back to CDs because yeah, but I, don't, I think it's too late for them for the urban market. The customers are already trained. I ain't you know? worried about the urban market because you know we still doing dumb shit like giving away music for free. That's what I'm saying. Like this, streaming was like a way to at least kind of at least monetize a little bit. I mean, because I mean, the, these customers ain't going back to buying on CDs. They the urban customers they may not. Or physical downloads. You right, you right, right, you're right, you're right. I see what you're saying. Like you said, basically, this ain't about the artist, this is about the customer. And the customer is never going to be retrained to go back and spend exactly. $12 and spend $9 for the month. Exactly. Get everything they They're going to figure it out. Yeah, I see what's not going to happen. And I think it, it's possibly a matter of time before that spreads to middle America. But, but I agree. I think it's smart on Taylor's behalf because it's going to work for her. You know, it's money left on the table for her. Yeah. And and in the fact that they had to figure out a way to pay fairly for streaming it. You know, once that happens, then it, that also may be a... a uh, a difference, so it's just something to keep our eye on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with that, man. Um, other than that, you know, we got a dope interview uh, today with uh, Blanco to here. Funny, funny guy. You know what I'm saying? Funny interview. He's a great writer and a um, and a uh, vocal producer, engineer. Funny story about how he got into engineering. Very story. You know, I mean, just this, just. I to do it. Yeah, he's a good. Team. And it's good game too. So don't yeah. drop a beat break. Right. Yep. Yeah, so I got something else. Anything?
Nah, man, it's a good day to bring outside a little bit, man. Shit. I need that there, Lucy Crabby, the cold But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's drop this beat break and God bless y'all, man. Thanks for tuning in. Ah. Peace. Welcome back to the Free Game Producer Podcast. We had a very, very special guest on the line. Um, he's a dope vocal producer, mm. songwriter, yeah. engineer. Yeah. He's worked with Monica, Fergie, uh, Jeezy, and Ludacris, just to name a few. Yeah. Let's welcome Blanco the Ear to the podcast. How you doing, sir? Welcome, welcome. Man, I'm fat and fabulous. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, see you. You're from Atlanta. Um, and Atlanta has a yeah. rich, a rich, rich musical history, all the way from like the Face Records, you know, the yeah. Outkast, you know, the Monicas of the world. Like, uh, who influenced you in particular growing up here uh, in Atlanta? Man, y'all dang, <laughs> seeing so so deaf do they thing on a level, you know, uh, Outkast, of course, man. We were doing the deal with them back back in the day through uh, Purple Ribbon. Oh uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were signed to Heba Jeeba. Uh, actually, that was in cahoots with Dr. Dre, so they tried to shop ideas to Outkast, and then my brother ended up doing a solo thing over there. And then it just went from that to everything opening up for that man, from different labels to Kadam Massenburg, Universal Motown. Oh, uh, yeah. The week he said we were going to get signed, and then we got fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's the typical record industry stuff right there, man. Like. It never fails, man. Right when it's about to happen, man, somebody lose their job or, I, you know, in some cases, some people get a deal and as soon as they get in the deal, then the person that signed them get fired. It just be, it's crazy out here, man. It, it get bad, man. Yeah. Now, yeah. I deal with that a whole lifetime now. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, so how did you get started though? Did you start out um, singing or like song? What was your original entry into the music game? Yeah. Man, I tricked everybody, man. I became a goddamn engineer. I ain't no nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to do music and I'm going to figure out how to be a part of it. So, Smart. I wanted to be a goddamn engineer and I knew I was going to be an engineer for too long. It went from that to more reducing for free, but I ain't not getting got, I ain't not getting paid so much to tell me my scene. Yeah. So one day, I, I got up out the chat and I said, man, I ain't pushing enough button. Y'all niggas going to have to hire me to more reduce. Right. <laughs> nice. They, they started calling, so you know, I couldn't do nothing to take it. Yeah, well, so like when you was in those types of situations, like, I think it's really dope, man, because like a lot of our listeners, we always tell them, you know, sometimes you got to get where you're going, you got to come in the door and just kind of provide a service for people, just be like of service in order to turn it into what it is you really want. And so I think that that's a dope testament to that, man, like because right now, man, you, you are probably one of the <laughs> industry's uh, most revered vocal producers. Um, yeah. I know everybody uses you when it comes time to cut records. I'm still trying to get my money right to get you come in and cut some records with me. Man, <laughs> man, yeah, man, I'm out here, man. You understand know me? <laughs> Just dope. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> other than uh, audio engineering, do you have any other like training other than like right. engineering? Yeah, training. Or how did you learn how to vocal produce? In other words, how did you just you know wake up one day and just know how to produce vocals? How did that come about? Man, to tell you the truth, I didn't even have no uh, training in engineering. I got dang on, got on the, uh, I think it was, I forgot what they called it, but the little mixing machine. And I messed around with it for about two weeks. After that, I started calling myself an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my God, man. I'm damn for real. Bro, you now, so damn silly, man. <laughs> Mm. Tuscaloosa, Oklahoma. Mm. Tuscaloosa. That's it. Long story short, I'm telling you, I'm tricking these people, man. I just got to get in hot feelings. Right. <laughs> I got a template. That ever works. I got a template, and on God, Will, <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the studio clicking, duplicate, duplicate, trying to figure out how to fly real fast. I know people want, want you to move fast. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Daryl. Daryl. Oh, I was a, I was a <laughs> wow. 
And I went from that to do like stuff with Dipset and everything, all within that same year. Yeah, like like we had, we had talked before, man. You were telling me that like that little hustle right there, man, got you in situations with like Polo the Don and people like that. And that's when you realize that like your vocal, your ability to vocal produce records was really like my gift. Your gift, and it had like crazy value to it. You know what I'm saying? That's man. My that what happened, man, because I was in there, I was telling the artists I've seen the records and putting the vocal production behind them and everything, and I, I was just like, this is what I enjoy doing for the engineer. Then I realized that was a real job title for us. I said, hold on now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. I, I ran across a uh, Cook Harris. Mm. Yeah. I saw an article on him and how much he was getting paid and artists he was working with, like Justin Bieber and <laughs> several artists. And I was just like, man, you know what? I ain't pushing no more buttons because really the engineer is the most valuable person to the Yes, they, the most, they the least respected. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, you said a mouthful just then, but. Mm -hmm. So, who was one of the first or the first artists that you worked with as a producer? As a vocal producer, uh, Christian Amelia. Woo! Okay. Nice. Man, I'm talking wow. about. Bro, you <laughs> went. What, <laughs> what, what song was that in particular? If you remember. But I did like. Eight records with us, for real, for real. I can't even remember the name. The name was neither one. Yeah. <laughs> That's so dope, man. So. Don't give me the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, check it. So, like, for me, man, you know, I, I became a fan. You know, um, I started following you some time ago on, on Instagram. And I started keeping up with you just as a person, man. And. You got like this thing about you, man, that's just like, it, it attracts people, man. Like, you know, you just a good old boy, man. You love cars, man. And you so dope with the pen and the vocal production. It's like, I just wanted to get to know you. And so as I got to know you, you know what I'm saying? As I got to know you though, I started to realize, man, like you really, 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 really dope with this, man. How did you get, how did you get to the point where the way you write songs, man, and and, and vocal arranger, how did you get to the point to where they so, so crazy, man? Man, to tell you the truth, man, I was afraid the whole time to uh, put my words down on paper and present the artist because I was scared of rejection for real, for real. Mm. And I was, I was on some stand my zone. The first time I started playing a record, I was playing them for my homie who put me in the whole industry himself. I learned a valuable lesson from him also, but God dang, I'll speak on that in a few seconds. He put me in a situation over at 12 Studios. Yeah. And I started, um, I started like practicing my right through doing engineering for this artist that was signed to Bangladesh, which I became Bangladesh official engineer, but you know, they never really last over that. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> Come up with all this whack. I was gonna write about this, write about that. 
Then I started letting the tracks talk to me. What do this track sound like you want to be married with? Wow. Yeah, yeah that's And <clears throat> I started, I, I, I treat tracks like relationships, man. Every time I lay a melody to a track, I'm married to that track. And when I became that serious about it, I found a gift in it and it became my success. Yeah, that's that's really dope, man. Um, that's that's incredible, man. Like a lot of our listeners need to hear that stuff right there because you know so many people, man, are trying to find. They they just make decisions and decide they're gonna do something and they don't really they don't really find the like the desire or the true desire in something. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just kind of feel like and, and you keep using the word gift, man, and I think that that's that's really important because. You know, you started in one lane and it took you to another lane and now and you it's continuing to morph, man. I'm watching you work, bro, and mm-hmm. you know, I man, we just had you in the studio over here like let like sixty days ago and in between yep. in between the title on and, and you know and, and move to Vegas, bro. So I just think that that's you know, what you're talking about, man, is really um it's excellent for our listeners, man. They need to hear what, what that is, man. Yeah, now you can tell, you can tell God damn Will is a, a number head, engineer, builder, and everything. That yeah. nigga said 60 days, not too much. Yeah. I'm going to make it Hey, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to do the drop there right now. <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. I've got a question um that I think a lot of our listeners could benefit from because <laughs> a lot of people um in music uh turn tr- want to turn to songwriting but they may or may not have a skill set to and uh a lot of people uh may or may not know how to sing but they feel like having vocal ability is a prerequisite to writing good songs. Can you speak to that? Like is that a requirement to write a good song? Do you have to know how to sing or in order to, to, to vocal produce or write music? Uh, no, you really don't, but it eliminates having to need anyone. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't like needing nobody for nothing for real, for real. Like, many of you, I mean, may not know that I'm a producer as well. I started producing because producers wouldn't give me their tracks. So I said, well, get on make my own. Hey. Then, <clears throat> I started writing because writers wouldn't write me songs. So it was like, I'm going to write my own. Yeah. And like, honestly, man, it makes it so much easier being able to sing multi genres. Like, I can sing just about anything, any tone, or sound like people, because I've been doing voice over my whole life, whatever crap, you know, messing around. But it's just sometimes I sit back and I listen to the record and I be like, man, it sounds just like a Ross record. It sounds just like <clears throat> a Monica record. It sounds, you can hear. That char- you can hear the characteristics in my voice and you you know who I was writing the record for because that's exactly who I owned in the beat. I tell you, I, I get serious when I get behind the mic, man. Like, well, I know. I put, I put my all into it, so I become who I need to be in order to do that. I used to be this, I'm, I'm straight from Bankhead, man, so I was on some street stuff, but you know, I never been really good. I was need that try to, I was trying to be what I was supposed to be because I'm from the street, but I'm never street. You understand me? Right, right. But, um, but long, <laughs> so long story short, I used to be like, man, I can't write no female records. I can't approach them a certain way that's too soft. And then I got out of all that. That's when my gifts opened up like a goddamn lotus. Hey! So, that being said, uh, what do you look for when it comes to working with producers then? Since you, you know. Oh, man. I leave production to the producers because I feel like everyone's gift is important. That's why I can sit and write songs with other people. I feel like what people bring to the table may be different from my approach. So I, I respect everybody, um, everybody's work. That's the thing. People got to respect everybody's work. Then you make it further, man, because a lot of people be out here fighting. A lot of people be out here stealing. I'm, I'm over the whole the text right now, so we're going to go and get done. <laughs> <laughs> You were here. What did you say? I said while you're here, go ahead and mention that, right? <laughs> but um, so I'm looking at your Instagram. I'm not a stalker, but you have a picture with Childish Gambino, one of my favorite um, artists. How is it working with him? Who? 
Who did he talking in the back? Oh. <laughs> okay. This is it's Travi. I'm um, another co-host here. What's good? <laughs> okay, you sound sexy, so I have to get you to the Wait a second, Tom. <laughs> but I figured out who it was, I was just making sure. <laughs> Work with Charlie Gumby, no. though, <laughs> I need it. Well, yeah, go to your, go to your Instagram. I'll, I'll follow you. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, working with Charlie Gambino was a blessing for real. I got called into the session through my homie Keith Dawson, who an engineer. He worked in like Blue Room and some everything. And um, I was um, in the session listening to the record, and he needed vocals and stuff on it. So, I did the vocals and I called the female to lay vocals. Prior to that, I had already done a record with him and uh, Lloyd on, because of the internet, uh, I did Oakland Telegraph all the vocal production, so that became a Grammy nomination type situation. Mm -hmm. And that was just on the home boy with Lloyd calling me because Lloyd is street love, you understand me? That's Big Jack for Cameron, and we all family, me, him, Sierra, uh, Big Reese, yeah, it's like yeah, straight in the house family squad. Yeah, yeah, nice. Definitely. That's dope. That's really dope. So, what can we look for that uh, you know you can talk about? Well, first, let me ask this, okay. man. You know what I'm saying? Because you work with one of my favorite artists right now. I know that you uh, you've become really close with Wanya um, from <laughs> Boys to Men, man. So, what is that like? Like. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 a little old school, so like I came up on that. Well, I need to know. <laughs> Man, that's like God dang God times old school. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm a classic man, you understand know I me? Mean? But look, working with one gay man, this man made stuff so easy. Yeah. It's almost like a cheat sheet. Right. Sometimes right. I be scared to do a run and I know my sister just could. He gonna take me. Uh, <laughs> and he gonna, he gonna make it here. Right. Cause he, he just explosive like that, man. Like, working with him has been like one of my dreams come true. Yeah. Um, I grew up listening to them and I'm a, man, I be talking in circles cause my mind's bad a little bit. Long story short, Growing up listening to Ye and all the backgrounds in the boys and men made me who I am today. Mm. Uh, that's, that's how I learned vocal production. I know y'all asked it like 10 minutes ago, but my mother used to tell me, don't sing because my brother's song was so good, she didn't like the way I felt. <laughs> so I became, you know, I was sensitive, but like, like I said earlier, I OB streets, so I had to pretend to be street, but I wasn't really street. I was sensitive. I used to go goddamn cry to myself and be like, man, I ain't good enough. Yeah. So I started listening to the background on records so I can be something of importance when it came to my brother singing. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so when they started singing and they were doing harmony, I would throw a little harmony in there, but then I put a lick on it like a twist. Hey. And it didn't so I found the notes and hey. I found the thing that people didn't really pay attention to, but brought color to the song. I just want to be color. Nice, there it is, nice, man. Nice, That's nice. dope. That's hella dope. Nice. So, uh, before we talk about your upcoming projects, what do you have any advice? Like I said, a lot of listeners want to get into music by songwriting in particular. What advice would you give those listening to, to us who want to be songwriters? Man, I keep it real all the time. This is what I say. This is my love. This ain't really my motto because I forgot exactly what I said when I posted it one time, but it's somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> If you have a gift, go get it. There it is. But if it ain't a gift, figure out how to make your talent work for you. That's good, man. That's good. That's really good. You, you're born with a gift. Talent can be stretched. Ooh. Talent is the practice you put into something to accumulate the ability to exceed people's expectations. Mm. So, to me, that's that's something that is molded. A gift is straight raw. Like, I can take a baby boy at five years old, he got a gift. When you open his mouth, I'm be like, I feel chills because God is on this. Right. It's a whole difference. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm talking about, man. I you know. You gift is with tracks. Like, you be hearing stuff people don't hear. <laughs> I be like, man, how did he just hear that? 
<laughs> like that, bro. I can't explain it. It's a gift is a gift. So if you got a gift and go for it, you got a talent. Then what to your talent has grown. Wow, man, that's that's amazing, man. That right there. Is- that's the whole reason we're doing the show, man, for those those bits right there, man, where you actually, you you leading people, man, to what they need to be led to, man. And I think that that's the most important part, man. Not only is your work, like, extremely dope and valuable, man, but it's touching people, man, and it's changing lives. And, like, you know, we are part of the business, so we know it's checks and it's balances and shit behind it that we deal with. But the truth is, the reason we're doing what we're doing is because we're just tapping into what God put on us. And I think that you just you just hit one with that one, bro. You knocked that out of the park, bro. Woo! But, but I'm trying to tell you, one day I'm going to be a pastor, y'all. <laughs> yeah, that was real eloquent. I thought that was T.I. Show up. Oh, yeah, we thought you were, we thought you were T.I. with all the big words. <laughs> hey, man, you know that. <laughs> That's dope. Yo, well, that, that right there, that sounds so good. I gotta listen back to that myself. Yeah, hold it down. So yeah, man, if you would tell everybody like all of your um social media, man, and like where we can find you. And you know, I just want people to be able to keep keep up with Block on the Air, man. Um I'm a fan because like I said, we into a lot of the same things. I ain't got my bread up yet to get them whips like you got them yet, but uh, you know, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm working on it though, man. So, you know. <laughs> Maybe we can get some money together. Let's go do that. <laughs> but we gonna get, hey, we definitely gonna get some money together, man. Like, it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> we got the rallies and everything, man. Look, we got some stuff brewing, man. You ain't told us all that, but we got some stuff brewing. We're gonna get it all, shake it down, put it together in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Run it over. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, my social media is at Blanco the Ear. Uh, B L A N C O T H E E A R. And, um, I mean, that's really all I be on Instagram. My Facebook, you can just look up Blanco the Ear. Yeah. And my Snapchat is Blanco Theory, which is my publishing company, B L A N C O T H E O R Y. Nice. Some of the projects that I'm uh, working on right now that's up and coming, uh, I got stuff happening with. My homie Monica already, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, boys, uh, boys the men. One of my favorite singers, of boys the man, one year, uh, working on his project. We can cut like a good fourteen records, man. They all massive trips. Like an album full of singles. He said he don't want nothing to be a, be a guy thing. No album, album because everything. Yeah. But only really to tell you the truth, I try not to write albums for I, I know that. I know that. Yeah, that's a good thing. So, yeah. So that's that's the thing, man. And for all you writers who want to be great, just remember it starts with the soundtrack. Yeah. And picking the right tracks to write to will actually enhance you. Even if you're not that great, if you got great melody, you still gonna win. <laughs> right. People say a lot of things these days that not make sense on these records, but hey. But it sound good. <laughs> it sound good. Yeah. He, yeah. he just talked up Scott too. Scott just walked yeah, in. Yeah, right Scott Morales just name. showed up in here, man. Hey. <laughs> what to do, little guy? How are you? How are you? Man, family, family. <laughs> Yo, cool. Well, yeah, man. So, bro, thank you for your time, man. This this means the world. This, I'm supposed to be in the microphone. I ain't in the mic. <laughs> thank you for your time, man. This 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 means the world to me, man. That you stopped through and talked to us like this, man. This is uh, this is big for me, man. So, um, I look forward to you know doing some big things with you in the future, man. And I wish everything that you got going on, it reaches all the potential that you have in mind for it, bro. Man, I appreciate it. I'm gonna got thing uh, book this flight. Yeah. So tonight, I'm probably be in Atlanta like Friday, so we'll link it up and make some shake, man. Say no more. And uh, for all my female listeners, uh, look for me. I'm doing like private house party. They call me Big Red. <laughs> 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 I'm just, I'm just talking. But yeah, man, let's get it. All right, let's do it, man. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. All right, family. Thank you, sir. Peace.